right? Yeah. Meet Henry Jones, known as Hank. He served in the U.S. Army November 19, 1942 to December 4, 1945. This interview is taking place in Hank's home in Gilderland, New York, October 4, 2003, at 11 in the morning. The interview is being conducted by June and Ken Hunter. What is your full name and when and where were you born? Henry Norman Jones, Scottsdale, New York. And when were you born? January 30th, 1922. Okay. Uh, what did you do before you entered the service? Worked in the AMP stores. And uh, what high school did you go to? Scattercook. Scattercook High School. Graduated in 1939. Uh huh. Now, can you remember what you were doing December 7th, 1941, when Pearl Harbor was bombed by the Japanese? I was in a movie theater in Mechanicsville. And? I came back to Scattercook. I heard about the bombing. And what was the mood of the people or the reaction when you found out? Well, I guess everybody was upset. Okay, now, were you drafted? Yes. And where did you report for duty? Hoosick Falls. Hoosick Falls. What was the uh, feeling when you got the draft notice? Oh, I already had two brothers in. Uh-huh. So, I was looking to go. Yeah. Uh, now, what was your basic training like? In Very short. One month. And I was set, attached to a unit, an observation battalion. And after one month, I was transferred to a gun outfit. Okay. I was in the 12th Corps, Fort Bragg. And uh, do you remember back then what was an average day like at Fort Bragg when you were there? What time did you have to get up in the morning? And um, seven o'clock. Do you remember what uh, kind of food they served you? Junk. <laughs> <laughs> Junk. <laughs> no, food wasn't bad. Mm hmm And did you um, have drill? experiences like doing KP? Oh yes. What I, was the for those who don't know what KP is, kitchen police? Could you describe some of the things that you had to do? Well, when I was on KP, most of the time I was, if I wasn't feeling spuds, I was washing pots and pans. And uh, what kind of training did they give you? Uh, I trained in uh, 155 howitzers from World War I. <laughs> and then later on, our unit was issued a new howitzer. But I, I, by that time, I was nowhere to, to do with the guns. I was on a survey crew. The reason why I was on survey crew was because they picked the out ones with the best math training. And when I was in high school, I took geometry, trig, solid geometry, all the, all the math that I could. After 1940, I went out and joined the CCC camps. I was out in Hawthorne, Nevada. I was there for 15 months. And I came back home. I worked in a mill for a while. That didn't pan out too good, so I ended up starting to work for the AMP. 
I've been in the food business ever since. Now, you were saying that uh, you went over to Europe for duty. Uh, I went overseas to Aquitania, which was a British ship. We was a, on board ship New Year's Eve in New York Harbor. From there we went to North Ireland, to Belfast, and we went down to Dungannon. From Dungannon we went out further in the country. Then we transferred from North Ireland to England. It was up at the top of a hill. We pitched out the pup tents. From there I went to a, a range up in Wales. Senny Bridge was, an, it was a British Army post. And we were there when the invasion started. From there we went back down to England. And then from England we shipped out and went to Normandy with Patton's Third Army. I served with, I don't remember the exact date that we landed in Normandy, but it was in July. After the breakthrough in Normandy, we went across France, Germany, and ended up in Salzburg, Austria. I was in Germany, had the opportunity to go to Dachau concentration camp the day after it fell to the American troops. I was in Salzburg, Austria on the war. Now tell us, uh, we've heard of Dachau. What was it like at that day that you were there? What did you see? I saw how the inmates were treated. I saw the place where they burnt the bodies. They claim it was not a death camp, but there was an awful lot of people that were burnt, and an awful lot of people that were buried on that. Yeah. When we was in Dachau, we was stationed right in the town of Dachau. We were billeted <coughs> in a paper mill. Hmm. And what was, uh, now you mentioned all these countries you've been in. Can you tell us what was what did you do? Uh, what was a, a move like from place to place? Did you go by truck? Truck. Yeah. I was also assistant driver for the officers' command car, but I didn't didn't do much of it after we went in Europe. When I was in England, I would drove him around a lot. And did people, um, were they friendly to you people? or As you liberated you? areas? Oh, in France itself, they were very nice to us. When we was up in Normandy, we were in the Hedge Grove country. After we left there, we moved pretty fast. The outfit I was in had one they found it a railway gun and they reported it in time so it could be bombed and knocked out. Our job was to locate enemy guns. 
what we did. I didn't work on, on the outpost. I worked in the CP. Receiving the calls. And forward and back to Corps headquarters. Also, I had the plot and from what the phone calls was. I had a plot where the guns were on a map. I was, our unit was in the group for Filet Gap, closing the Filet Gap. Hmm. That's when a lot of Germans surrendered. German Seventh Army. When the Germans surrendered, uh, what did you do with them? Did you herd them off to a place for questioning or right to a prison compound? I never had any problem with them. The only place I was always in, near the Flay Gap, there was a collection point there where they brought the Germans in. It was a camp that the Germans used to imprison French fighters. And when we took over, we used it to imprison them. Then they were sent back. What they would do is, when they got enough of them, they load them on a truck and take them back. Hmm. What was it like being out in the field regarding uh, being able to take a shower, wash clothes, get a haircut, shave? Showers were far and few in between. We did get a chance to take showers a couple of different times. Most of the time, it was using a helmet and washing up, and that's it. So you wore pretty much the same clothes for many days? and. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And did you, you say you worked in the command post? Yes. And did you have to, uh, so you didn't have to do a lot of um, hiking and all, or did you in your... No. Every time, well, any movement that we made, I was in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. What was it like the first time uh, you were being trained with the, the heavy guns there? Uh, I imagine it was quite an experience for you with the noise and uh, the precision that you had to be aware of and the safety. Actually, I wasn't on the guns when they were fired. I'd already been transferred to a survey group. It was one time we were in an area near Paris, and there was an artillery outfit right next to us, and it was colored soldiers. And when they loaded their guns, they counted off and sounded off and says, Hitler cult your children. <laughs> That's just what they did. Now, while you were out in the field, there probably were periods of uh, inactivity. Were you able to take uh, part in any R&R, &R, rest and relaxation? And if you did, where did they send you? I never got a chance to go any place until after the war was over. I was in Salzburg. I was sent, I got a pass to Paris from Salzburg. I did, when I was in Salisbury, I did travel around a lot. I went to Birch's Garden. I went up there, really, to pick up some s s captured supplies, mostly alcohol. Many a times I was, went out on the, vehicle to go back and get food for 
from the uh, Quartermasters. This one time I was at a place in France. It was cold, it was in the winter time. I went back with a vehicle. I wasn't driving, I was just a helper. We went back and we got food. And after the war was over, and we were on our way home, it's in the area, or staging area. I was in that quarter's tent where the cooks were, naturally. So we ate like kings. They would steal enough food and bring it back to the huts and cook it. It was the same way it was in North Ireland. We was in a place called Moy, M-O-Y, which is near Armagh, and I was in the with the headquarters bunch with the cooks there too. And we ate good because those cooks used to bring food in. Now um, you said you were you had a few days to travel around France before you came back to the states. What did you choose to do? What kind of things did you see, or do you remember? Oh, we went to Paris, sightseeing. The art, the theater, the cathedrals. Did you go up the Eiffel Tower, or wasn't that built yet? <laughs> no, I, I didn't go up it. Yeah, it was there then. But it was there, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I did go up. I not think about it. I didn't go all the way up, though. We went up for sightseeing. Mm -hmm. I would imagine the mood on the um, boat coming or ship coming home was a lot different from the mood when you went over. I different. I didn't have any problems going over for seats like this, but coming back, I was on a small ship, E. B. Alexander, was the name of it. It was a captured ship from the First World War. <coughs> and uh, I got seasick most of the time. But going over, I was on that British Aquitania, big ship like that, didn't get that sick. Mm -hmm. What was it like on that big ship? What kind of quarters did you have? People think of these big liners that it's luxurious. What was it like? Well, it was bunk beds and I don't know how many was in the area, but packed in like sardines, really. That ship was well loaded with troops going overseas. Of course, every day you t turned around, there's a crap game going on in the hallways. And did you have to do work on this uh, ship, didn't you? What did yes. you do? I worked again in KP going over. And I was, my job was making the coffee mm -hmm. and these big steam kettles. You make coffee, you make it real strong, and you heat water and dilute the coffee and pass it out. And did you get a lot of complaints about your coffee? Oh yeah. <laughs> but they didn't, they didn't complain too much because they were glad to get it, period. Right. <laughs> Now, uh, when you were overseas, uh, we often heard how Bob Hope and different people would come to entertain. Did you ever see any of those shows? Bob Hope. I saw Bob Hope. I saw one other one, but I can't remember what it was. And did Bob Hope bring all the beautiful women with him, like they say? Oh, yeah. And did you have a big gut? Uh, where was it held? Out in a field? Out in a field. Yeah, and you had a lot of people go. Yeah. And um, I, did you enjoy the show? And, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay.
Now, uh, when you were overseas, how often did you get mail? I imagine it was far between times. Not really. I got pretty, we had pretty good service on mail. That's good. I imagine that was a very anticipated event when mail call was sounded. And did they get packages from home? Oh, yes. Toward after the, after the war was over, they had this business with the fellows with a high number of points. For, was, we put it was in early. They sent home, and the mail clerk in her outfit got sent home, and I got stuck with the job. And what did you do as mail clerk? Well, the, the fellows gave me their mail to go out. Somebody would pick it up. And they would bring the mail to, for us, to, for me to pass out. Of course, there was plenty of packages that came. There was packages that came for the guys that were already heading for home. So naturally, we used them up ourselves. So, in other words, uh, you always hoped for food in those packages and you'd all have to share your food. Oh, yes. Now, going back uh, to while you were in the combat zones, how often did you get a good home-cooked meal? Did you have to rely mostly for your meals on the rations? And if so, what were they like? Well, our outfit today wasn't too bad with, with meals. There was one time I was in this place in Germany and that's breakfast time the Germans attacked. And they came at us and drove us out of little town. And they, naturally after the Germans get driven back out. We went back and all the food was gone. They ate it. Mm. We were supposed to have eggs that morning. We didn't get them. The Germans got them. Mm. We did get eggs once in a while. And not just powdered eggs either. Eggs in the shell. Mm. Now can you recall at times you had to rely on eating rations. What were rations? What was a typical ration like? What were in these cans and pouches? Well, most of our rations were K rations, which were the dry ones. And what did they uh, have in, in some of those I know we see have seen a sample from one where they had bread in a tin. Yeah. Did you ever have spam? Once in a while. And did you like it, or the guys like it, or anything was good? Because <laughs> we hear a lot of people don't like spam today. <laughs> That's because it's a lot of them don't like it today, because we got it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You had your fill. So, um, did you ever get any awards or decorations? Just mm. good conduct. And, um... And a service medal for serving in Europe. Okay, and you're, you got the World War II Victory Medal. Yeah. And your American Service Medal. Now, can you remember what it was like? What was the reaction? of your fellow soldiers when the war ended. What was the feeling like that day? Glad it was over with. Of course, we were already in the Salzburg, Austria before the war ended. And of course, the guys were glad it was going to be home soon. That's all we talked about then. Let's go home. And was there a lot of cheering and partying, or? Well, not really in our outfit. Our outfits was small. 
you know, it's her sleep. She bought a battery I was in, put it in some odd men. That's all. Mm -hmm. And so when then. I was in, when we was in Salzburg, Austria, we stayed in homes. In other words, we took over mm -hmm. places. So if you stayed in uh, homes, what was the uh, home equipped with or like over there at that time? How much? People didn't have much then. No. And uh, did they have the homes heated? Or don't? No. Mm. See. She was, was in Salzburg, Austria. We was in a place House was nice. Had a big porch, up second floor. And we used to sit out there on capits. And um, it's a beautiful country over there, isn't it? If you could enjoy it. Oh yes. Salzburg itself is a nice place. Mm -hmm. And of course, where Hitler had this place up there in the Purchase Garden. That. Tremendous. Yes, the tell view. us a little bit about it. Well, what it was so high up you could see up as far as Italy. And was it a great big estate or building? Or oh, yeah. What? But the one of them was already gone, destroyed. One building was already destroyed. But where we mostly were, there was a tower there, too. That's where you could climb up. Boy, well, it was an awful climb. That's where you could look around and see part of the other countries. Going back to, uh, I don't want to bring up uh, bad memories, but back to Dachau. When you were there, and you were there, I think you said the day after, uh, uh, the troops liberated it. Yeah. Did you want to, what, who was in the prison camp there? Were there men, women, and children, or? Mostly men and women. There was some children, but not too many. What was their general condition like? Some of them were just hanging on. A lot of them were in good shape. I remember the town there's a big sergeant in our outfit. He's not too far from here either. He is gone now, though. He, uh, he broke out crying because these guys caught a hold of, these guys from the prison, got a hold of a German who was kicking them to death, stomping them. And that guy, he pushed out crying. Of course, we broke, they broke it up. The MPs broke it up. They took the children away. Then. Did you were you able to see for yourself the conditions that they lived in the barracks? Oh yes. What were they like? Stacked up like animals. The bunks were crowded. I only got. To into one. But the barracks, just the bare necessities. Then, uh, when you came back to the uh, United States from serving over there, what was it? Tell us about the day you arrived back here. Where did you come in? And come in down. Near New York. I don't remember exactly the name of the camp. I know that was on board ship. I had a typewriter, German typewriter. I threw it overboard. I went down the, into the ocean. 
that's because you had to carry everything off the board ship. I had enough just carrying my bag. Did you bring back any particular souvenir for yourself? Well, I had a ring, SS ring. I took off a German Dachau. In the sense it's been lost by my grandson. I got a flat out of I still have a flag that flew over a school, German flag, but it had a fire here in the house and it burnt some of the flag, but I still have the flag. Now when you were separated from the service, you said uh, they went on seniority, those that came in before you got out. Was there a set term that you had to serve before they would separate you? No. No. When I got separated, they disbanded the outfit. The outfit won the mothballs. Therefore, everybody that was with the outfit got discharged. When you got back into the States and got your discharge, how did you get home? Did they provide you with transportation or did you have to do your own? Train. Took train from Fort Dix home. And I imagine were you greeted warmly when you uh, came back to the States? Well, I probably so. Were there people to greet the ship when it came in or not? Not really. Okay. Not that I know of. Mm -hmm. It might have been. But not a uh, big deal was made. <laughs> no. So then when you came back home, uh, you had to, I suppose, get a job again. And that's where you said you went to work for the A&P? I went back to work for them. Okay. I was yeah. worked for them before. So they knew you and sort of had you in oh, mind? Oh, sure. Because when I shipped out, the first day I was in Albany. And the store manager and one of the clerks was there when we left to say, to say goodbye to me. So were they still there when you came back? Oh yeah, the they store manager. Thrilled to see you, I suppose. I worked with him for years. And what kind of work did you do? Well, I was a grocery assistant manager originally. I took meat training became a meat manager. I left the AMP, went to work for Central Markets, which now is Price Chopper. I worked for them almost 35 years. Okay, and you were uh, mainly a meat cutter all those years too then? Yeah. Did you join any service organizations such as the American Legion, VFW? When I was in service, they formed the post in Valley Falls. The post is named after a young man that was killed. My sister enrolled all four brothers that was in foreign duty in the VFW. I'm a chartered member. Since then I've joined the American Legion, but I don't belong to any post. I belong just to the National American Legion. <coughs> Do you think that uh, your years in the military affected your life in some way? What, how did it affect you and your thinking? Not really. Are there any of the fellows you served with that you kept up a correspondence with or talked with from time to time on the phone? We have a reunion every year. This year there was only eight veterans and two officers. Is at Columbus, Ohio. The original reunions started by a man from Columbus. <coughs> 
I didn't go to the very first reunions. But I haven't missed the reunion. It's 1971. 1971. Mm. For a while, they were every other year. Now they're every year. And where all of these reunions been held? All over the state. Florida, Missouri, the last one was in Columbus, Arizona. Next one is going to be Texas. So to go back to uh, when you were discharged, how did did they do uh, accumulate all your pay and give you a big sum when you went out, or how did they pay you when you were out uh, in the field? I imagine you didn't have many occasions to spend anything. Never got much money either. When we got discharged, we got a certain amount. I know I got discharged around 11 o'clock at night. There was a guy from Valley Falls, he's passed on now. He was in the same outfit. He had left early, the early group in July. He got discharged 11 o'clock in the morning the same day I got discharged 11 o'clock at night. Because he messed up. When, was in the, when they were in the staging area. I guess he ended up hmm. Well, that's... Well, is there anything else you'd like to tell us about your thing? We did have one time. We just pulled into this bivouac. We are getting set up. The Germans come over wood jets. That's the only time that we really got hit hard. And several of the guys, two guys got killed. And the next day another guy got killed. One of the fellows that got killed, I knew him. Pretty good. He come from Long Island, and you probably know Alfred, yeah, the bakeries, Hetman. At Edelman. Edelman. His name was Bill Edelman. He was related to him. He got killed. <coughs> and a good friend of mine got wounded. I never heard from him after he left. In fact, another fellow from Wisconsin, him and I both are trying to get a hold of him. We can't find anything, anything about him. Can you remember the winters over in Europe while you were there, advancing to and working towards the end of the war? What were they like? Did you have adequate clothing? Well, one place was in a place called Looneyville, France. The first winter. It was kind of cold. That's the year that we were issued heavier clothes. I know I slept in a dugout. We had made a dugout. We used to even heat it. It's a little fire and a makeshift stove that we made. Mm. That was a bad winter. So they'd have a lot of snow and... Were there times the unit was bogged down because of uh... The weather conditions? No. No, didn't bother. Most of the time you're already 
bivouac anyway. Most of the time you went moving. Okay, well, we thank you very much, Hank, for spending this time with us and telling a little bit about what your experience was like.